We'd like to go ahead and congratulate our Toledo Rockets as the champions of the Mid-American Conference with today's victory, and we'll let uh, Coach Candle open with an opening statement. Yeah, just really proud of our football team for, you know, being who, who they said they wanted to be. You know, this guy's set on the, set on on the journey back in January, and like every team across the country, they they, they want to be champions. Um, and I think this, you know, with coupled with the great coaching staff that that we have, um, which filtered down to the senior leadership, three of these guys that are sitting here to my left. I'm just so proud that they were able to, you know, set the culture and what they wanted it to be and uh, maintain it through the entire year, which is really difficult to do, and we're just really proud that they were able to finish it. It's been a long time since we've been able to bring one of these back to the city of Toledo. Uh, I think you know, very, you know, so happy for our city and so happy for our university and really proud that the city of Toledo showed out the way they did today. I and mean, what I thought was a tremendous crowd for the game. Uh, hats off to Akron, played a great game, made it really difficult on us at times. Um, you know, Coach Bowden and his staff have done a great job with that football team and getting them to the championship game. So. Again, a reminder, please raise your hand for questions. We'll get the microphone around. Logan, could you touch on that final drive of the first half? They had the punt, pinned you guys at the three. You already had the lead. You guys went 97 yards and, and scored. That, that was a really big touchdown there. Could you talk about that drive? And, Coach, could you comment on that drive as well and how, how that was the big momentum swing? Yeah, I mean, um, first off, Terry, you know, got us going. You know, we ran the ball really well. Um, and after, you know, Terry had a couple big runs, you know, we, we took a couple shots. And luckily, you know, John Vay got open and, you know, put the ball where it needed to be. Yeah, the only thing I would tell you is to be able to put yourself in that situation, you have to have a lot of trust in your quarterback. And I do. Um, you know, when we were able to get ourselves out of that hole and got ourselves closer to the 30, the 40 yard line there and got towards midfield, I thought if we could, you know, take a couple of calculated risks there and hit on them, we'd have a chance to go down and score. And, and yeah, I thought that was a huge drive in the football game. And, um, you know, that, that drive really stuck out to me. And certainly the blocked, the blocked field goal in the, in the first half were two major momentum swings, I thought, in the first part of the game. Coach, yeah, that 97-yard drive definitely felt like the backbreaker, but it seemed like the game really did turn on that blocked field goal. I mean, 7 nothing, they could make it 7-3. You guys take it, block it, turn around and score. Just talk about that swing. Yeah, great individual performance. I think I think Nate got his hand, Childress got his hand on it, if I, if I saw it correctly. But, um, you know, those guys have played really hard on that unit all year long. And sometimes defensively, it's easy to put your guard down and say, well, we stopped them. We're going to let them, you know, get their three points and get off the field right here. But a lot of great individual efforts out there, and um, certainly a huge momentum swing, like you said. Um, this is for any of the of the players. Um, obviously, this has been a you know a long time coming to get this um, MAC MAC championship. Um, did it did it feel like that to you guys? I mean, does it does it feel like it was um, you know a product of a of kind of four long years, four or five long years? Um, it's definitely been, you know, a long time coming, but, um, you know, this team just grinded all all year and great leadership, you know, starting with Coach Candle, you know, is preparing us, you know, for this moment and to stay in this moment. And it's definitely special for, you know, the city, the university, and the fans. Uh, yeah, like Terry says, it's, it's, it's a very special feeling. Um, it's been a very long time since we since we got to this point, and I'm just so proud of it. I'm proud of our staff. I'm proud of this team. I'm proud of this city. And... There's going to be many more to come. <laughs> and just for Jason, you know, a lot of coaches talk about the MAC as a great proven ground because you, the team's so much parity. Yet, the, I think eight of the last nine games, you guys have, have won big. First of all, you guys have made it look easy, but how hard is that? And what what's allowed you to have such such consistency? You don't really see these scores in the MAC much. That's a good question. Um, I do feel like our conference, especially on our side, has uh, so much parity. I think everybody on our side is bowl eligible except one team, and that one team beat a Big Ten team this year. It's really hard to navigate through that schedule and really hard to finish off. Um, you know, I don't. I think I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe we're the the first outright champion in, at Toledo since 1998. Um, so it's difficult as much as our program has had success, and we've had a lot of it. You know, so to, for these guys to be able to etch their name in our program's history, this is 100 years of Toledo football this year, and this is a team that will forever be remembered for that, for what they're able to accomplish. And and like I told them earlier in the week, some guys they've never finished anything in their life. You know, they. <laughs> 
you've all been there. You read the book and you get to the end and you figure you know what happened and you just close it up. Um, but these guys finished the deal. They ran through the line one more time. And you talk about that in winter workouts, finishing through the line and always they break it down on finish. They break it down on MAC champs. Well, they finished today and they can certainly break it down now and call themselves MAC champs. Logan, obviously, or I'm sorry, Terry. Logan obviously gets a lot of the headlines, one game MVP, but you had 180 yards and two touchdowns today. Can you talk about how good it felt to go off like that? And coach, can you touch on the balance when he's done talking uh, with the offense? It's, it's a great feeling, but you know, those guys up front, you got to give credit, you know, where it's due. Those guys opened up holes and I was just able to hit them. And um, this is a great senior leader and quarterback in Logan, you know, it puts the pressure on defenses, you know, about the pass game, and you know, it opens up for the run game as well. Well, Terry, he knows to credit those offensive linemen. He's smart. Uh, he'll be taking them to dinner tonight. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we've battled a lot of injuries this year on the offensive front. And good teams don't recover from that. Great teams do. Um, great programs do. You know, uh, people that are waiting their turn patiently um, put their hand up and ready for success. You know, the end of the world is not when Cody Thompson broke his ankle. The end of the world is not when we lose three interior starting offensive linemen throughout the course of the year. It's just the next man keeps coming back and keeps fighting and keep, you know, makes the senior class galvanize and become stronger as a unit. Um, just really proud of their leadership for that part of it and really fighting through the tough times and handling the adverse situations. How great was it to have that balance today? Well, that's who we are. I mean, we try to be that every day, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I got a guy to my left here that's, you know, he's got a voice to sit and cry and moan about passing yards and I'm the best quarterback that ever played here because he is um, and continue to ask for more, but he doesn't, you know, he understands how he feeds off of Terry and Terry certainly understands how he feeds off of, you know, reduced boxes in the in the running game because Logan is able to challenge safeties down the field and challenge corners down the field. So to have that balance, um, you know, that makes it really hard to defend. Um, you guys get a lot of attention for how good your pass game has been this year and the past years. But with Kareem Hunt last year and now Terry having a great game and a great season this year and someone like Shaquif Seymour showing flashes of greatness when he's only a freshman, how do you maintain um, such talent in your running game while focusing on the, uh, the passing side too? Well, we stay true to who we are. We recruit to to what we want to do. Um, you know, I think there's good coaches out there that got good scheme. And, you know, you can you can get caught up and enamored by who you are as a coach and your scheme. But you better every year reset to the best to make sure that your best players are playing the best when it matters the most. And that's really been hard for our staff because we have a lot of good players. And we got to continue to find ways each and every week. It challenges us to find ways to get them the football in space. You know, I think both of those, you know, those two outside receivers today, seven and three, both had really good games. I didn't see the final stats, but it sure seemed like it um, early on, you know. And, uh, you know, when you're able to balance it up, not only run and pass, but you're able to balance it up on how you distribute the football, and they're really hard to, to defend and stop. Uh, Coach and Trayvon, can you guys talk about that first half defensive performance? I mean, is that the best you guys have played all year defensively? Well, there was a zero on the scoreboard for a long time, and we were kind of stuck in our way a little bit there on offense, just kind of up and down, in my opinion. And I, and I really thought at times we played kind of a sloppy game, to be honest with you. But um, the defense just keeps standing up. You know, that's a, you know, they probably, in my opinion, got slighted a little bit in the all-conference voting. You know, I think there's some guys in there that deserve some things that maybe they didn't get, and, and that's okay because today they got what they deserved. They've had an outstanding performance in the biggest game of their career and when it mattered the most. I'm really proud of them for that. Yeah, best like Coach said, uh, we have we feel like we had guys in here who kind of got cheated out of all max. So we came out here to prove a statement. I mean, getting to keep them under to zero points all the way to the fourth quarter. I mean, that's huge. Our, our philosophy, all we do is get to the ball. Eleven has to the ball every play, and and, and get the ball back to our quarterback and get it back to the offense and let them do what they do. Uh, Jason, you, you know, you talked about this being remembered as one of the all-time great teams. N now that it's over and kind of the, the, the complete performances of the last couple of weeks and the way you guys have been down the stretch, is, what kind of statement do you think you guys kind of made to the, the nation the last couple of weeks in terms of where, uh, where Toledo belongs on the map? Well, it would be hypocritical for me to worry about the things that I can't control because I consistently preach to these guys in front of them every day to take care of what, what's right in front of them and what they can handle. So. You know, I don't, I'm not worried about all that. I'm worried about, you know, 
doing my responsibility as the head football coach of the University of Toledo, and that is to win games. And, you know, two years ago to the today, I think December 2nd, two years ago is the day that I was hired here, um, you know, and, you know, put together a great staff. And, you know, these guys have stuck with us and stuck through the whole deal. These seniors up here went through a coaching change. Uh, they could have packed it in and they could have bailed. Um, they just keep getting better and keep fighting and keep pushing along and keep doing what needs to be done. And I'm really thankful to have them and really thankful for our football team right now. Coach, um, given the fact that this is the second time you've played against Akron, how does your game planning change knowing that they've not only seen but kind of felt, gotten a feel for your tendencies? You've also gotten a feel for theirs. How do you game plan differently than the first time around? I don't think you do. You know, again, like I said, every coach's challenge is to find ways to get his best players to football. And that's, you know, I spend a lot of time, you know, trying to figure that out, you know, and there's a lot of plays that I like that I don't get to call every week um, because it's about the players. It's about getting those guys the touches they deserve and uh, letting your players go win the game for you. So Akron's got a bunch of good players on defense, a couple great ones. Um, and some ones that made some highlight type plays today. And again, like I said, I thought we were sloppy at times, you know, on offense. But when you play against a good defense, that they force you to do that. They're very opportunistic defense. They take the football away. They've been really good in situational football all year long. Um, and they made it tough on us today at times. But, uh, you know, to times like this and in games like this, you rely on your senior leadership to, to pull you through. And that's what happened today. Uh, Trayvon, this one's for you. Uh, you know, the last game you guys only had to go up against uh, Thomas Woodson. Uh, this game you had to go up against two different kinds of quarterbacks with two different kinds of skill sets at two different kinds of ages. You know, what was it like having to prepare for two quarterbacks like that and then even going out and uh, competing against them? Well, number one, uh, he's we know he's a mobile quarterback. He, he, he liked to do a lot of running. So uh, it was kind of – we had in our scout – we had our scout guys kind of – emulate both of them. We had a runner quarterback and then we had a, a, a quarterback that uh, emulated number four. And we just kind of, I mean, like I said, we just get 11 hats to the ball. It ain't matter what quarterback was in there. Our philosophy is the same. 11 hats to the ball and yes, get stops. Uh, Coach, how do you keep, uh, how do you keep team morale up um, on those two plays, the uh, fumble on the near the goal line and then the targeting call that not only get reversed by refs, but get reversed on replays. Um, how do you keep motivation among the team up on things like that? Coach them from January 1st on. And if we're worried about that in today's game and, and we get to this moment and that's what we're worried about, then we've the moment's already passed us by and, and we're, we're in a bad spot. You teach your guys all year long to handle adversity. You know, that's why our team didn't deflate when we had some really tough injuries. That's why our team doesn't uh, break when it when it when times like that happen. Those are momentum plays, and, and they're big plays. Uh, I don't, I'm not saying this to, you know, to to knock your question. It, it's just I think you, you, the coaching on that part of it is done a long time ago. You don't even you don't even worry about it to now. I, you know, I, I don't the targeting call, I, I kind of whispered in nine's ear just, hey, now it's a tough play. It is what it is. It's a bang bang deal. It's full speed, and there's nothing you can do to change it now. Um, but we got to move on, and we got to get we got to get back and play. And there's still a lot of time left to go on the clock, and you you got to finish. And they did. Gentlemen, thank you. Congratulations for the victory. We'll let you get back to the locker room and celebrate. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Ken. <laughs>